Title reader tonight is Amy. Amy Levine, thank you very much, Amy. Thanks, Amy. That. It's my pleasure. Our, our judge is Greg Holden. Greg is, uh, this is the first time for uh, Greg uh, uh, being judge for us. He's uh, a photographer based in Longmont, Colorado. And uh, Greg, perhaps you want to say a few words about yourself? Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I've been in Colorado just a couple of years, about five years now, uh, formerly from the DC, Washington DC area. Um, so yeah, I've been speaking and judging at clubs for about 10 years now. And I just always like seeing other people's work and Hopefully I can provide a good critique for everyone tonight. Uh, I know I already provided the scores ahead of time to Bill, so that should help uh, speed up things uh, tonight. And we'll have plenty of time to uh, talk through the images and hopefully give you some good feedback on how you can make uh, images better. Great. Thanks. Great. Okay. And we can start. If you should be seeing. basic. Three images. So, Did you want to run through them once or have me just jump into commentary the first pass? Uh, Amy, Amy um, will read the, the title and then we'll go to you. And if we have a sequence, we'll go through all of the members of the sequence and then come back and then you can start at that point. Okay. Silver Falls, Washington State. Now, Greg, to you. All right. Um, yeah, so I, I, I like this uh, waterfall. It's kind of different to see this um, low perspective that the photographer chose. Um, usually you're a little bit more kind of dead on to it. And so that was interesting. That was, it was different. That was low, but it definitely has created a lot of keystoning effect, a perspective shift where everything like the trees on the right and stuff are all leaning in. Um, so although I appreciate the low view of the waterfall, I wasn't sure that that kind of perspective of everything leaning in, uh, worked for me. Um, I, I liked that the photographer tried to choose a little wider field of view. I think maybe you went a little too wide here, this kind of dark tree mass on the left. Um, I don't think we needed that. You could crop that out and just kind of keep, uh, just the waterfall on the brighter side of the greenery on the right. Um, so I think a few different, different things next time would, would make this good. Um, pretty good controlling the highlights at the top of the falls. Uh, we're starting to see just a tad bit of blow out there, uh, blown out highlights. Uh, but otherwise exposure is pretty good. Beautiful storm. Um, this one, I think just, there was a couple, couple things, uh, with this one, we have uh, this, these rocks are very interesting. It's almost like there's some sort of rock wall or something here in the lower left. Um, and I kind of wish I could see a little bit more of that. Maybe the shape of that would maybe mirror some of the shapes of the rocks in the distance. Um, so I, I'm thinking this one, I would have preferred a little wider crop. Uh, we're losing a lot of shadow detail uh, in the rocks in the foreground. You know, the photographer's chosen to include you know, a good bit of rock there in the foreground. Um, and so if you include it, it's important to you. Um, I'd like to see a little bit more detail. So a little longer exposure will bring that those details out or just e e even in your post-processing, uh, you know, e even the basic software has some type of shadow recovery. Um, and that would also recover some of the shadows in some of those distant rocks, just so I can appreciate that more. Um, I think this one, the we we have the horizons it's not in the center it's probably about 60 some percent or whatever i feel like you, you included a, a huge chunk of sky and a, and a huge chunk of rocks and i think you'd just be better if you just picked one or the other and minimize the other so i think like the clouds they're pretty dark and you probably crop down on that and i think the really the image is the waves and the rocks here in the foreground um, so I think if you made this more like a four by five crop, I think it'd be a little bit stronger image. And you can kind of see that if you kind of take, if you see what I'm doing, you hold hold your hand up and kind of cover like half of the sky. I think it just pulls you into the image a little bit more um, with that crop. 
Sonoma Mountain Evening Spring Light. So this one was really pretty. Uh, you know, we got a lot of different shades of green uh, here in the foreground. Um, I like what's going on with the sky, the clouds. And we have this bright spot of sun. I think the photographer did a good job of keeping the sun off a of, off of frame so it's not um, super bright, but still allowing plenty of light in. We are losing some, some highlight detail there in the sky, but I think it, in this particular image, it's okay. I actually appreciate that it's really bright, kind of blown out whites and yellows that we're seeing there in the upper right corner because I think it balances out to the rest of the image that does is a bit darker with the, the greenery uh, here in the hillside. So I think that was a, a smart choice in, in your cropping. Um, and I think you needed that exposure to get enough detail uh, in the rest of the frame. Uh, so these are, this is one of these photos where you kind of make some compromises, you know, not doing, I'm assuming this not doing a high dynamic range or blending multiple images. So uh, you're choosing to lose some highlights in the sky to get the shadow detail. And so I think that was a smart choice. So I really like this one. Pictorial intermediate, three images. Leaving an impression. So this is a, a neat kind of find, uh, whatever stain, this leaf or whatever has left on the ground here. Um, it's created some interesting uh, color palette. I liked the oranges, which is replicated in the, in the stone in the background, as well as the stain. So I thought that was a good sight. Uh, I think for this one, this is another one where I wasn't a big fan of this particular composition with the, the we'll call it a leaf stain, uh, leaf stain with the stem kind of running perfectly horizontal through the frame, kind of divides the frame in half. Um, kind of goes back to that photography, uh, we'll call it a guideline, not a rule, but guide, guideline of you know, don't put your horizon in the middle because it divides up your, your photo 50-50. So you've kind of done that here with this leaf. So I would have rather seen uh, this stain maybe on more of a diagonal or some type of angle. I think they've been a bit more dynamic, dynamic uh, than this having it horizontal. Um, so if you have some other frames of this, maybe a little wider where you can twist and crop it a little differently, I think you'd find it make it a little bit more impactful. Tokyo Tower Noir. Uh, this was neat. I, I've actually never seen this tower before or photos of this tower. I liked how you've kind of framed it up here in the buildings. I only wish that we had some lights on in the house or hotel, whatever's here on the left side, uh, because we have those ones here on the right. And so I think it would balance the image better to have, you know, the big bright tower in the center. Then we got some windows uh, and then just have a little bit more on either side, because as it stands now, we have those bright wit lit interior windows kind of light up this right side screen. But then the left half of the screen is is dark. So it just feels a little imbalanced to to me. So. You know, you're frame you're framing up this tower, you know, versus finding a spot where it's just out in the open. So you, you've made that conscious choice to frame it up. So you got to make sure there's balance in your framing. Um, and and I don't think we need this car or whatever's here in the lower left. Um, I recognize you're trying to maybe show as much as the tower as possible, but I think you could have cropped that out just a little bit. Um, you, you still keep the window there, uh, but I don't think you need that big mass uh, down there. So. A uh, couple of different things I would do differently on this one, but good exposure on the tower. It's always challenging with a night shot and something lit up at night. On the way home, Richmond Bridge over the Thames at Richmond and St. Margaret's. Yeah, really long title on this one. Um, yeah, and you allow your titles tonight. Uh, they're they're more like uh, statements, I guess, explaining what the photo is. Um, so this one's really, really nice. Um, you know, this has got a lot of great things going for it. Um, first of all, we got this wonderful blue hour light. Um, so we're seeing still a little bit of light in the sky there in the background, <clears throat> excuse me, but uh, still a nice blue color. And then of course that's reflected in the water. Um, I actually uh, like this long exposure um, that the photographer chose one to, to get the brightness in the scene. I'm sure that bridge was probably heavily silhouetted. So that longer exposure allows me to see the shadow detail there. And then it causes motion blur in the set of rowboats here along the line. And I thought that was kind of a neat element. I think at first I was a little <clears throat> taken back. I was like, oh, what's going on here? Why is everything blurry? 
in those boats, but then I realized, oh, they're just moored up there. And so they're moving uh, in the water under long exposure. So that was kind of a, a nice little interesting thing to find. Um, the photographer did a good job with stopping down on the camera for a smaller aperture so we get this little starburst on all the on the lights there. Um, so everything was just framed up really nicely here and just a lot of nice pleasing colors. It's just nice to look at. <clears throat> Royal advanced seven images. Morning surf. Yeah, this one also uh, some nice color. We're getting this you know nice kind of turquoise greenish blue in the water. Um, I was a little the the title was called Morning Surf, and so we got the surf there. We even have a surfer there riding away. There's one off so in the distance, and I was a little perplexed by the scale. I, I liked this kind of close up scene, the beach scenes and the rocks. Um, but then I felt like there's like a second image here of the surfer and the sun and the the scenic. And I kind of find, my, find myself kind of bouncing between the two. Like, which one did I want to look at? Do I want to look at the rocks that are kind of cool? Or do I want to look at the surf? And so I, I kind of was on the fence about that, whether I like that kind of play of, you know, bouncing between the two, because you give me so much foreground you, you make it seem like that's really important. I want to look at that. But then my eye wants to go look at all these other things too. So I feel conflicted a little bit, uh, but it is still a pretty image. Um, and I like the shutter speed you chose to show still kind of the breaking of the waves and be able to freeze that person. Gauntlet of Ginkgo's, Far Niete Winery in Napa. I think this one was a neat idea. I like your um, where you chose to stand to get the perspective. So we see that kind of nice diagonal road going in. It's got some nice highlights on it from the sun. The trees look a bit oversaturated to me, uh, just a little bit. I, mean, I know these are, are bright green trees, uh, but this looked a little bit verging on radioactive for me. I would tone down the saturation just a little bit. Um, and, and maybe this is how they looked in the light that you saw, um, but it just looks a little too unnatural um, with the, the especially the light green there. Um, <clears throat> so that was a little disconcerting, um, but definitely makes for a pop uh, of color, a graphic image. But for me, I think I'd choose something a little bit more subdued. Um, but I did like the framing on this one with the kind of row of trees here on the left and then this angle kind of cutting into the photos. That was nice. Seaweed near Fisker, Iceland. Yeah, I couldn't pronounce that uh, title either. Um, so I really love the composition of this one, this kind of ropey sea, seaweed here, and we get the surf, and then it's the mountains in the distance, and a, a nice sky kind of complements it. Um, the thing here that I wasn't as much a fan of was the surf. I think you needed to... Um, choose a different shutter speed, either maybe something slower. So we see like a surf coming in or, or sorry, faster. So surf coming in or longer. So we see more of those trails of the soap bubbles uh, trailing back into the ocean. Yeah, We're seeing just a hint of them. Stay here, wait, everything's uh, hurting. I'm gonna be watching Ellen, we got a hot mic. That's all right. Ellen, if you can mute, unless you oh, have a sorry. Thanks. <clears throat> So yeah, so I think this one, I would have preferred a longer exposure. So we see more of that surf uh, receding back uh, into the ocean and we'd see more of these lines uh, that we're seeing there. Um, and I think that would just balance out that area and I can really appreciate that it's a receding surf and um, I think that'll work better. But the exposure is really good and the composition is really good. But this is one, if you have some others with different length of shutter speeds, you might see if you have something where the surf is a little bit more impressive. Savannah, Sariema, and Rose. Yeah, really a uh, great shot of uh, this bird here. Uh, I mean, you can just see the detail is really, really strong here. We got really sharp in the eye. We get, even got a little catch light in the eye and just, you can see all the little feather details um, and then good job blurring out the background. Looks like it might you might have helped it out a little bit um, to get that background as blurred out as you did. And I see a little kind of a little bit of haloing around some of the feathers, maybe. 
Uh, but you did a, a good job, though, kind of blending it all in. Um, it's kind of a nice color that really complements the bird. Uh, but really, it's just that posture with the beak up and the sharpness. Uh, that's really what seals the deal uh, here. And I, I like your composition where we see the head is very prominent, but we still see a little bit of the neck, a little bit of the body. I think it really fills out the frame uh, really nicely. Right. Um, this one I like too. Uh, here looks like maybe the background was probably blacked out in, in post-processing, which I also gather from the more advanced category, um, which normally I'm not a super fan of. Uh, I usually like to see a little bit of background, but it kind of works for this image because we have such a bright dress with the bright white dress. Uh, and then it's kind of mimicked with the, the black sleeve that we see coming down there. Uh, you did a good job of making sure we have just a little bit of detail in our dark hair. Uh, so we don't see that ribbon kind of floating in space. Uh, so good job with your exposure here. And again, a good posing of, of this uh, young girl here um, with her uh, outfit on and the in the face paint. So this one's, yeah, really interesting. And I haven't seen an outfit like this before. So also points for originality. Um, just not familiar with this. Honeybee on the sunflower. This one, I like the uh, the detail in the the bee. You know, really, really sharp. We can see all the pollen on his on his feet, uh, on his on his legs. Sorry, um, and I liked his uh, the framing of him, where he's kind of curved slightly, and then up in that corner, and I can really uh, see the rest of the sunflowers on. The problem with this one, much like the the ginkgo trees we saw earlier, it's just, it's very heavily saturated, uh, so. And these are bright, you know, sunflowers are bright flowers, especially if they're well lit, like this one looks like. But the problem is that bee then is as sharp and as detailed as he is, uh, starts to get lost um, in the petals of the sunflower because everything's just so bright and uh, it's not blurred out because he's, he's right up against it. So you can't really do anything as far as depth of field. Uh, and then we had just had this big mass of sunflower here on the right side. And if you, if you look at it, and kind of divide up the photo in like percentage of real estate, that middle of that sunflower takes up probably half the frame. Um, and although it's interesting, I, I love taking pictures of sensors of sunflowers. To me, it's all about the bee and these, and just the, the kind of wider field of view. So I think you need to recrop this one to give me a little bit more of the petals uh, and may, maybe a little wider. Would It would make the bee a little smaller but I think it would be more balanced. Um, the other thing is you could go in tight and uh, much tighter on this and crop out uh, maybe right below that, that lowest red flower there and then crop in from the right, uh, maybe through the center. So, so the, the bee's kind of on a one thirds line instead of here is kind of on a quarters line. Um, so I think this one, I, I call this an in-between. It's not really up close, you know, macro, but it's not really a wide shot either. It's somewhere in the in between, and and I guess I'd rather have one or the other. Cloudy day at Nicasio Reservoir. So it was neat with the uh, reflection of the clouds. You had some really interesting kind of puffs of clouds here. Um, but then that that was kind of the highlight, I guess, for me. You know, this rock formation. There's not a lot going on to it. It's just kind of heavily vegetated, so it's not even changes in vegetation. I mean, there's some trees there. Um, so it's just kind of a big brownish gray mass. Um, so it's not as pleasing as, as those lovely clouds. Um, and then you've chosen to include a whole bit of water here in the foreground. I don't think that was necessary for this picture. I think for this one, I would just go full symmetry and put, and this is one case where you can put the horizon right in the center and make this a pano crop and take out a bunch of that water. I don't think you need as much blue uh, as you did. Um, and, or maybe you could include more sky so that cloud is not squished up against the top of the frame and less water. Um, so to me, it just seemed like it was flipped. I wouldn't normally put that much blue. And I think we just, as interesting as the clouds are, I think the land mass is just not enough to kind of tie the whole picture together. Pictorial Masters, three images. Stranded and deteriorating, the Point Reyes at King Tide. 
I think I've seen this boat before. I believe this is one that got caught on fire once upon a time, or maybe, or maybe this is the results of the person with the steel wool that caught on fire. Um, so yeah, I, I love abandoned wrecks. Uh, I think this one, although it's a really cool subject, I like your framing you came in relatively tight, uh, but slightly off center. I think those are all good choices. Uh, this one is just time of day. Um, it's very, the sun's very bright. Uh, so it's, it's, the highlights aren't blown out, but it's just very bright on the image. Um, I think this is the, it, this kind of image where there's not a lot of color in it. There's, you know, some hints of yellow in there. Uh, but this one would work really well, I think, as a black and white. Um, Cause you'd have some high contrast with how we have the lights and the darks currently. Um, and a black and white, you could probably bring out the texture a lot more. Um, and I think it would also play to the kind of abandoned, decrepit look. Um, so, because I think this photo, there's not a lot of color to it. And with the strong light, um, it just looks more like a passing snapshot versus something I'd see in a master's class of a, of a camera club competition. Receiving storm. So this was interesting. Um, I'll... I'll I'll mention, you know, as a judge, I try not to have biases or preferences. I try to appreciate all types of uh, images equally. Uh, but I will just still my one bias is when photos become so filtered and so painterly that it looks like a painting, I, I really have a hard time wrapping my head around it because to me, it's not a photo anymore. And, you know, with the filter as applied here, it's it's a very interesting filter. It's created this kind of little swirly effects and some nice, you know, really kind of enhanced the colors. Um, but to me, it looks like a digital artwork or painting. And so I find it hard to hard to reconcile with other things that are pure photos. So I'm like, well, was this a photo that was manipulated or was it a digital painting? It's, it's you know, hard for me to tell. Um, so that's just my personal bias. I'll just throw that out there. Um, I do like the colors, the colors of the sky. And like I said, I do like this effect. Um, so it's it's almost, I wish, you know, some clubs will have a creative category where you just go hog wild in these kinds of filters. Um, and so that's kind of nice because then you're kind of judged equally with other people doing those heavy, heavy processing. Um, but you're, this wasn't set up like that. So it makes it hard to kind of compare against the others. Um, so I feel I don't, don't give as good a, Good a shake as maybe the others. Um, so you're going this heavy. I would I would you know expect perfection, right? Because your your sky's the limit. Um, so we have like this bright green spot here down the bottom. Um, I'd tone that down, make it all green, or make all the grass that same bright color to really uh, pop. You know, because you're we're, we're making this a very artistic representation. So you got this pu beautiful sky. And the browns and stuff like that, although they got some interesting kind of wiggly patterns in them, they're darker. So I'd rather have that whole grassy area, that same bright shade of green that we have in that one spot, just go brighten all that up um, and just make it more like a you know Andy Warhol kind of pop art, um, really pop of color. And then we have this kind of tree that goes off frame. I wish I saw just a little bit more of that. Um, interesting as that little trunk thing is, I just feel like I need to see a little bit more of the tree just to have it all kind of rounded about. So not my cup of tea, uh, I guess, uh, is a, a neat filter, but maybe just a slightly different composition would uh, make for a better subject. Celestial Dawn. So this one was really, really nice. Um, so, you know, nice, not only a, a wide landscape, but it's not a typical wide landscape in a pano. We have this, not only do we have width, we have depth. Uh, so I liked kind of seeing that where we can really see all these valleys and stuff uh, in here and just the detail in there is really, really phenomenal. So I'm not exactly sure what kind of uh, sharpening or processing you did to, to make it look so so elegant, uh, but sharp at the same time, um, but really nice job on your processing. And so just really lots of nice colors to this one with the nice chestnut browns. And then we have the whites and the grays there. And then we have this kind of pretty sky. It's bright back there, but that's fine because we have a lot of dark colors here in the foreground. So to have that kind of bright washed out sky and the kind of blue mountain back there, I thought was a nice little added bonus um, 
to this image. And those colors, I think, are complemented in some of the colors of the sandy stone here in the bottom. So um, really interesting uh, vista. And like I said, really, really good processing uh, on this one. Nature intermediate to images. The European paper wasp, often confused with the yellow jacket wasp, not only feeds on other insects, but also on nectar. Given that, they play a role in both pest control and pollination. Right. So longest title, I think, uh, uh, of the of the night. Uh, but uh, interesting to learn a little bit about this uh, this wasp. Uh, or sorry, confused with the wasp. Well, it is a wasp, a different type, paper wasp. Um, so this one, I think this is where we've cropped in maybe a little too tight. I wish his wing wasn't clipped off there on the left. Um, it's very bright. I don't know if there's a, I guess a, probably a flash was maybe used uh, on this. So we have this dark background, but then everything is really well, really strongly lit. Um, and then he's just cropped in really tightly. I wish there was just a little bit more field of view uh, on this one, but good detail uh, on the wasp. Again, we're able to see kind of little flecks of sp pollen on him. Uh, you kind of frozen the frozen him with the uh, you know his antennae. A lot of times those get super blurry because they're just moving all around. Uh, so good job kind of freezing the action. I think you went a little too tight. So if you cropped in on this and you have a little bit more uh, real estate, I'd try to widen it up a little bit so we don't clip off his wing. Uh, you kind of one rule with cropping is the phrase I've always heard is crop like you mean it, right? So when I see just a little tip of a wing, uh, it to me seems accidental versus, you know, lobbing off half a wing seems very intentional. Um, so I'd like to see us a little bit wider field. And if you can tone down some of the brightness, um, probably caused by the flash, uh, that would probably help the image as well. White line sphinx, Hiles lineata, is a member of the Sphinx of the uh, moth family, sometimes confused for a hummingbird, is known to pollinate a variety of flowers as adults. Yeah, so again, interesting to learn about the animal here in your little description. Um, so interesting uh, pattern on the back of this um, moth, I guess. Yeah, they said it's a moth. And but again, this one looks like some of the other ones where it seems like a grab shot. Like we we saw it, we grabbed their camera, set our camera at F8 and shot away. Um, so it's just not the most interesting background um, for him. I think you look like you tried to get it in an angle so maybe we can see a little bit more of the side of his face and kind of maybe a little bit more of his abdomen, but you didn't quite get over far enough to appreciate that. So it kind of I find myself going, well, I wish I could turn a little bit more to the left or just be straight up and down right on top of him so I could really appreciate the pattern on his back. Uh, so this one to me just seemed like a, a quick snapshot um, because of that background. Nature advanced, six images. This one's a, a lot nicer, uh, especially following the ones we were just seeing where we have this uh, butterfly, Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want to read the whole thing? <laughs> sorry, I cut you uh, off. I'm using a short tradition. title. It's traditional. <laughs> um, yeah. Female tiger swallowtail butterfly with yellow and black striped wings and iridescent blue on the underside of the hind wings. They are among the largest butterflies in North America. Wingspan up to 5.5 inches. All right. So yeah, big... Big butterfly. Um, so yeah, I, I like this one. I like the framing of this one. We got uh, enough room around the butterfly and then the butterflies uh, nice and sharp. We can really appreciate the detail and all those colors that they were describing. Um, you did a good job trying to blur out the background as best you could. I'm guessing this, depending on how close that vegetation was and what lens you had, that was probably the best you could do. Um, so I like that the butterfly is sharp and the, and the flower is sharp. Uh, but most of the background is is mostly out of focus. If you could go in and darken just a few of the things in the background, that might help. Like we had this kind of one bright thing kind of coming right out of his wings. That was really distracting to me, kind of in bottom center of the image. Uh, so if you can go in, yeah, right in there, exactly. Yeah, so if you can go in and just darken that down a little bit, um, I think that would just help that um, butterfly just pop a little bit more because um, I kind 
that was kind of a strong bright line is kind of lead because and it follows kind of the line of the butterfly how he's leaning back um so that one in particular um was bothersome the other ones in the background not not so much um but otherwise uh this is really cool. steve if you want to mute yourself thanks A mother jaguar, Panthera onca, gives her cub a reassuring lick as she comes out of the Guiba River in Brazil's Pantanal. Pantanal. So. Right. Uh, so yeah, uh, you know, nice scene to capture this interaction uh, of the mom and the cub. And I I like how you you caught her with her tongue out, and you can see her tongue licking. I only wish her eye wasn't closed. I'm guessing it's probably just a natural thing. She goes to lick and she closes her eye. And so it's one of these things where we have a trade-off where you caught the tongue, which is great, but then without the eye, that background is so busy, her head really gets lost into the background. I, I have a hard time fi figuring out where the end of her edge of edge lines of her head is uh, without having that eye to kind of help me pace it. A really good look on the cub kind of looking um, here. So I think this one, I would have waited just a slight different moment when maybe the mom's head was maybe turned. I'm assuming she probably took several licks on his back. Uh, you know, maybe the head was turned just a little bit more so it could just stand out from the background a little bit. And then the leg position was the other thing that kind of bothers some. There's two hind legs. It's like she's about to take a step up with her left hind leg, probably onto the riverside there. And so they're kind of like twisted together. And so it looks a little awkward. Um, and so with the framing, how we have the cub kind of looking down into the right and then the arch of the mom's back, it kind of creates this curve line where I want to follow that curve and follow it all the way out to the tail. So I follow it out and I see these kind of weird leg position. So I would have waited just a split second more to see if that legs could be spread out a little bit more, like maybe one half lifted up as she's lifting up onto the bank. So if you were taking multiple frames, like hopefully I think you were uh, or should have been, um, if you have another frame with a slightly different leg position, I think that'd be good. Um, the other thing is all the action is right there in the center, that the interaction of the mom with the cub. I don't, the vegetation on the left, I think is nice. It kind of just balances out the image, but I don't think we need so much vegetation on the right, especially we got a little bright kind of brown thing there on the right center. Uh, so if you crop it out, not right up to the edge of the cheetah, but um, maybe just halfway halfway there. Just crop off some of that right. I think that more squarish crop would be better for this particular scene. Lesser anteater, one of three. The lesser anteater or southern Tamandua tetradactyla is a mammal that resides in the rainforests and savannas of South America. All right, so as a spoiler, I'll, go, I'll go through all three first. Okay, great. Yeah, well, that's good. Two of three. Their diet consists primarily of ants and termites. They burrow into large nest mounds with their huge claws, using their long nose and tongue to excavate the insects. Three of three. Their claws are also used in defense against predators. When startled, the anteater stands on his hind legs lifting his claws into the air to show his size and strength. Okay. All right. So, yeah, so we have, the, so the three three images. Um, so I guess I wasn't familiar with your club with how this works with kind of showing three of something. Um, so I, I kind of just judged them individually as individual pictures. Uh, so that's how I'll kind of provide my comments. Um, so yeah, it was kind of neat to see you know, different sides of the anteater to try to figure out you know which composition works well. And so I think this is a good you know exercise too for your members to see a couple different compositions of the same scene. Uh, so this one, you know, I, it's nice to see the whole body is all elongated. You can kind of appreciate all the colors and the shape of his body. Um, so to me, this is a nice kind of you know, record shot like I'd see in a nature book, like, hey, you might see this anteater while you're out on your safari. Um, and so to me, it wasn't as in impressive from a just a composition and a body position of the anteater as the other images. Um, so good for the collection, but I think I like the other two compositions better. 
So this one was actually my favorite composition. Um, we we don't see the whole, well, we see the whole body, but the tail is kind of obscured up there in the left, but that's all right uh, because the, the we see enough of it to see, yeah, he's got a tail. Uh, but I really like seeing the head turned towards me, um, kind of cocked at that little angle. We can kind of appreciate his little feet. Um, and so I thought this one was the best kind of balance trying to show the animal, but still show the environment and show it kind of all integrated together. Much like the leopards we just saw, or the cheetahs, I don't think you need as much space on the right. I would have cropped in a little bit of the right, maybe take up all the way through that red leaf that's there on the right. Um, still leave a little space around the head, but I don't think you need to leave as much as you did because um, that would keep my focus in on the animal and, and not on just kind of dead space on the right side. And nice and sharp too on this. Um, so this one was also an interesting pose. You have it kind of coming towards us. Um, so this, this is one where I don't think you need the, the landscape um, crop. Now, if you're doing this as a triptych and you're trying to show all three together, a lot of times you want to have the same aspect ratio for all three of your images. Uh, but I think this one will look really good as a square or just a vertical. Um, I don't think we needed as much around the sides, especially on the left side of his face. Just there's a blank hill there and some you know out of focus background. So it's not really adding that much to the picture. The vegetation on the right maybe adds a little bit to show kind of environment the animal lives in. Um, so I would have just cropped this one in a little tighter, but I did like seeing his kind of paws up. You could appreciate his claws. Um, but number two was my my favorite of the bunch. Oh. A leopard peers out from the crook of a tree. These animals are expert tree climbers. And although nocturnal, they can be found resting in trees during the day. Okavongo Delta Botswana. Yeah, so I've seen tons of photos uh, from people on safari with the, the cats in the trees, but this one is really different. So I really give it a kind of points for creativity. You usually see the whole cat, he's, he's sprawled out on some branch or something like that. So maybe he's got some gr grisly, uh, bloody kill in front of him. Uh, so this one was different. You know, it's really framed up here amongst the trees. If you look close, you can see a little bit of his paw, or maybe it's a tail, um, there in the bottom center. Um, so I, I really like the originality of this one and, and the framing. It's kind of in this V almost of these trees. This one tree on the left foreground is a little distracting just because I guess when you're focusing on him at a distance and that's closer to you, it's, it's blurring out but it's also got a bit more light on it, so it's bright. Um, so I'd like to see that just darken down a, a little bit um, so we kind of have an even luminosity to some of the trees on the right or maybe even in the background, just because that was kind of catching my attention because it was such a big curvy shape and it was kind of well lit. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna study the tree on the, on the lower left or the left side of the frame. I want all my attention to go just to the cheetah's face there. Um, so I think that would improve the image a little bit, but otherwise a uh, really nice framing of him and, and definitely unique, unique way to show this animal. Great blue heron, Ardea heredias with fish. This bird speared a tiny fish in murky shoreline waters, demonstrating patience, quickness and accuracy skills. Yeah, so you know, pretty pretty looking uh, bird, and I like yeah having a little fish in there. You can even see the the eye of the fish. Uh, so so good job getting some sharpness on, on the bird there, and even the little fish. The face is a little soft if you look at its eye, um, and its upper head seems a little soft there. So probably he was moving, um, and so you got a little bit of motion blur there. I like seeing this rock in the lower right. Uh, with all the little like muscles or something on it shows a real good sense of place, but I don't think you need to show as much of the rock on the left and and perhaps the photographer is trying to show as much of the body as possible. So they included that um, as maybe a framing. Um, but to me, it's, it's too dark of a mass. Um, I'd, I'd rather see most of that cropped out and just have just the one boulder and, and the bird. Of course, then you end up with the two items and, you know, photography rules will say you like to have odd numbers of things. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't want to study the dark rocks so much. So I'd rather minimize them so I can spend my time focusing on the bird because there's really good detail on the plumage there. I just wish that head too was just a little sharper. 
Um, so yeah, when you photograph herons or any kind of birds, the faster your shutter speed can get, the better. I mean, I, I usually try for a thousandth of a second uh, if I can or greater, um, just because they, they're fidgety, they move. Next. The quiet morning is broken with a loud womp just after dawn as thousands of Canada geese, Winter Canadensis, fly out to feed in the nearby fields. Staten Island Nature Preserve, Thornton, California. So yeah, real, real pretty. Kind of showing this this wide shot uh, with the sun kind of framing up uh, behind all these all these birds here. Um, for this one, I don't think we needed this uh, bottom mass of dark uh, grasses here at the bottom. Um, it it does kind of you kind of get this layering effect. We have the dark grass, then light, and then dark birds, and then light, and and so I see it's kind of a layering thing. Um, but I think the birds themselves are so dense in there. There's so many of them. And it's already kind of this dark band. I don't need so much of a dark anchor there at the bottom. Um, so I would have cropped out a good bit of that and maybe just show just a, a little sliver of darkness and then the little um, bits of grass floating in there. Because um, that will keep keep it from kind of being too much of an anchor that my eyes sink down to the bottom of the image. And then my eyes are going to stay stuck on, on the center of the image where they've got that bright sun coming up. Um, we also have some birds in flight here in the upper right. Um, I would, I would crop those out, keep it consistent, birds waiting and, and floating, and then some lifting off there in the background. Um, cause my eye sees those things up in the sky and Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> You lost him? I think we lost Greg. Let's see if he can call back in. Maybe we should uh, take our break a little early. Yeah, let's take let's take a five minute break now. We still have three more images and then we move into the next well, let's, yeah, let's let's go ahead and take our break now. So, yeah, oh, I just lost I just lost you all. Oh, you're back? Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything dropped Great. away and then it just reloaded. So Okay, good. I don't know what happened. Okay. We we're just about to take a five minute break, but we won't. We've got three more images in this in nature. Okay. And There's you'll read all the entry. scores out at the end of the category, I'm guessing. Uh sorry? You'll read out the scores at the end of the category. We'll do it later in the night after we go through everything. Yeah, we'll go through. We'll do, uh, we're doing two sections now. We'll take a five minute break and then we'll do uh, three more and then another five minute break and then we'll come back and show the winners. Ah, okay. Okay, Master. Nature. Masters. Uh, British soldier lichen, Cladonia cristatella is a fructose pup lichen named for the bright red tips resembling British helmets. Extractions from the fungi are used to make antibiotic creams. Yeah. So, yeah, so this one is kind of an interesting subject, um, but I I guess I had a, there's a, something like this where you're doing a macro kind of close-up detailed shot, um, you really have to have razor, razor sharpness. And so, especially for this photo in the master class, um, I would expect it, a lot more sharpness. Um, and then we have these two, I guess they're leaves, kind of look like holly leaves almost. There's a bright orange one there in the center and then one down there at the bottom. I find those really distracting, really kind of it's a different color, breaks up the scene. Um, so I would have gone, and I know some people don't like to do gardening when they're taking their photos, but I would go in there and just with pincher fingers, take those out of the frame um, so it's not distracting. Um, so it may be kind of hard to appreciate because it's a busy image when I don't have this really tack sharp detail of those little green frilly things, um, the lichen sticking up, um, and then just all gets lost in the background. Um, so there's just a lot of technical things wrong with this one. I, I like the framing uh, where we have this kind of triangular shape here on the side and then this kind of different type of lichen there in the upper right. Um, so the frame is good, but I think you need to do a little cleaning of the scene and then just get a little lot more sharp sharpness um, 
on, on the lichen here in the foreground. The non-vocal Galapagos land iguana, Conolophus subcristosus, will assume an aggressive open mouth posture when threatened or for competition over nesting sites. Galapagos equidora. Oh, I am still stuck on the previous, oh, there it is. I don't know, I'm having a little bit of delay all of a sudden in the internet feed. Sometimes, um, some clubs I judge at, they ask people to turn off their videos. Uh, sometimes that helps with the bandwidth of the broadcast. I'm not exactly sure why that why that works because it should be individual per person. But um, anyway, uh, if you don't need your video on, might turn it off, might help with uh, the little break some scene. Um, but yeah, Iguana. So I've been to Galapagos and seen these guys in person. Uh, so really great job catch, catching a really good pose on him with the mouth, the mouth open. But nice if we could see both eyeballs, if you were just a smidgen to the right. Uh, but otherwise we got the one-eyed Jack here. Um, and just the, you know, the pose is really good and, and the shallow depth of field to blur out the background. And I love just his two paws, like right up front, we can appreciate all the texture and detail uh, of his skin. Uh, so just good composition on this one and good good choices of the technical things uh, to make him, his face pop out, but everything else be kind of subdued into the background. So this one was really nice. Another sequence, annular solar eclipse, one of three. An annular eclipse occurs when the moon is too far from the earth to block out the entire sun. Here, the moon begins to occlude the sun. As the moon is almost centered in front of the sun, clouds begin to move in, blocking a view of annularity from this vantage, much, much to the frustration of photographers. As the moon moves past the sun, the clouds finally part, Viewing an annular eclipse requires a filter for the entire duration to protect the viewer's eyes. All right, so yeah, uh, interesting choice here. I, the, we see different um, timing of the eclipse uh, as well as different framing of the moon in, in, in the scene. Um, so you kind of can appreciate each image individually. Uh, so some really nice colors in the sky here with the blues. Um, there's two spots in front of the moon. I don't know if those are birds flying or sensor dust or something on your lens, but I would just clone out those two little specks that we see on top of the moon. Um, but otherwise, the, the image, this one is nice. I forget which of these three I like the best, but... Yeah, and this one, this one I think I, I didn't like as much. The, the, the little, yeah, the little sliver... Sliver there was interesting, um, but I felt like we lost, started to lose stuff where the clouds are all out of focus and it's just that little sliver. Um, and so this one was kind of the better compromise of just a little bit, uh, kind of that nice crescent shape, but we still can appreciate the clouds and stuff around it that kind of frame it out uh, really nice. So this is a nice nice grouping. Um, I think overall my favorite was the first, first image, uh, but this third one's pretty good too. Okay, we'll we'll take a short five minute break. Everybody's ready. We'll get back. I'll share my screen. All right. Right. Travel intermediate one image. The room freely throughout Nara, Japan's first capital. Home to many important temples and shrines for the beautiful gardens. Yeah, um, this one, I, these uh, little totems, I guess, that maybe you call them these little statues, um, very interesting. And, in, you know, kind of mixing that hard, uh, you know, stone with the, with the deer there um, was kind of a nice play. I, I would have loved to see the tops of all the, all the little statues and not have them cut off at the top left there um, to just maybe step back just a little bit. Um, but the deer does start to get lost in there. We got a lot of texture, we got a lot of depth of field. 
Um, and so I wish the deer could pop out a little bit more and maybe that's just a editing thing to make him a little brighter or, or something like that, or darken down the statues just to be a bit more balanced, but interesting, uh, scene nonetheless. Travel advanced one image during the day, hundreds of fishermen gather along the Galata bridge in Istanbul, Turkey, hoping to catch some fish. Sardines, mackerel, and bluefish are among the favorites caught by these fishermen. So this one, I was, I guess, I'm not, I guess, agreeing with the the photographer's choice of the angle. Um, you know, I think I would have wanted to take a step to the left and kind of angle down, so I see a few more faces of the fishermen. Um, to me, this it seems like more of an maybe an artsy attempt at the fishermen where I'm, we're just seeing all the many, many poles kind of stacked at each other on different angles. So if that's maybe kind of more the look you're going for, I don't need to see this inquisitive gentleman here on the right looking out of frame um, or the other guy, you know, looking down at his, his rod or his, maybe his cell phone. Um, so I would have cropped out that whole right part of the image, crop out that guy, crop out that telephone pole with the speaker on it. And then we just have maybe crop right up until the, the guy in the yellow slicker. Um, so then we can see just a few people and then it's just all about the rods. And then that kind of play of all the lines against the lines replicated in the houses behind it. I think that would be a stronger composition. So almost more taking this photo to a square crop, square crop and cropping off the left, the right side uh, would I think be a lot stronger. Travel masters for images. The golden monkeys of Rwanda are usually an afterthought for visitors going to see the famous mountain gorillas, but frequently the monkeys end up being the favorite experience. Um, yeah, so this one is interesting. I, I like how he's kind of hiding behind the leaf there, so we always see a little bit of his, his one eye, uh, but we're seeing lots of nice detail on his face and the fur. What was disturbing to me is this one hand that's outstretched and it's a little blurry. Um, and, and I guess he's grabbing a little leaf that's also blurry. So just not enough, fast enough shutter speed. I'm guessing he was kind of in, in shade. And so you just really need to amp up your shutter speed and probably your I, ISO uh, to be able to get that faster shutter speed. Um, because his face is really nice, but it's that hand is right next to his face. So I see that hand and then I'm like, why is that hand so blurry and out of focus? Um, so that kind of pulls away from some of the appeal of his eyes um, and his mouth. Um, but I do like how you've kind of surrounded him in the greenery. I think that was a good framing choice. Boats along the moat, Siem Reap, Cambodia. So this one's a really uh, nice composition, really nice take on a landscape where we have just a little bit of greenery here in the bottom kind of marshy area along the riverbank. And then we have these couple of interesting boats. Uh, then a couple of trees to kind of frame up the left side of it. And then it opens up to this big mass of sky and the river and then the other side of the river. Um, so I think your framing here is really, really, really good choice. Um, you've done an awesome job with the exposure to get enough shadow detail, but not be blowing out the sky in the background. Um, and so just very a tranquil looking image. You know, I could sit and stare at this one for a while. So it's really nice. Moon rises as night falls over San Francisco. Um, so this is this is good. I like uh, we, we talked in some of the other photos about how you we've had some rock masses on the sides and corners of the photos. So here's a, a good example where they've kind of diminished that that rock face. Um, that's just a little bit in the corner, just kind of frames out the corner, but it's not so big that it draws too much of my attention. Um, so I like how we can look through the Golden Gate Bridge here uh, and see the skyline, see this one kind of lit up building, which you frame uh, beneath the wires there or between the wires there. So I like this kind of tight crop uh, and then you know having the moon up there to kind of fill that, what otherwise would be a big void up there. I think that was a really smart choice uh, on your framing. So I think this is a really good example of how we can take something that's normally seen these big wide vistas um, and kind of isolate down to just some of its core elements um, and frame it up um, really nicely. 
Cheetahs are increasingly rare in the Maasai Mara due to human inter interaction and climate change. In 2022, 45% died as cubs. Seeing a mother cheetah with four cubs is uncommon. Yes, yeah, so this is interesting. It's interesting to hear that little story. I wonder if all four of the cubs are hers or she's maybe adopted some cubs after another mom is either out hunting or uh, was killed or something like that. Um, so yes, yeah, it's kind of, this is the first time I've had clubs like this have little descriptions versus just pure titles. Um, so sorry, uh, getting sidetracked. Uh, so yeah, this was really good. Uh, really great light on, on the cheetah. Um, I like how the mom is just a little bit brighter and that's just cause she's sitting upright and has that white belly and really catching the light. Um, and there's really, really nice sharpness on all the little cubs. We can appreciate all of them. Uh, but then the background, although busy, it's it's enough out of focus that doesn't d detract from from the cheetah. So I don't know if that was all done in camera with just a really, really nice lens or there's a bit of editing um, and post-processing. But either way, the framing's nice, the light's nice, uh, nice and sharp where it needs to be. So this one's just a really, really good image um, from this, from your safari. Monochrome, basic, three images. Campfire White Mountains. Yeah, this one's another good one uh, with uh, the framing here. And so here we've kind of centered, put the, the subjects off center here down in the bottom corner um, with the, the gentleman sitting around the campfire. But I like how you, you chose to not just crop in like a square um, and, and show this wider fuse. So we're seeing the light from the campfire reflected in the tree and then some other darker trees here on the right. And then, of course, that, that allows us to appreciate a little bit more of the night sky. We're seeing maybe a little bit of the Milky Way there. So really good job uh, with this composition, this kind of wider field of view. I, I would nitpick just a few little things that they would make it just even more icing on the cake. Uh, on the lower left here, uh, this tree branch, I don't know what's on, on the tree, uh, something kind of halfway up the tree trunk there. It's just caught some light, and I just I kept yeah down, no down from there. That one does bother me. Keep going down to the right, to the right, uh, to the left of the bottle on the table. Um, anyway, so you see the bottle on the table and then on the left, to just to the left, of, there's something on tree trunk. I would just darken that way down, uh, take that into shadow, maybe even the trash bag and stuff. I would maybe just darken a lot of that corner um, just so we keep all of our focus on the gentleman because I, I got inquisitive, right? After I saw the gentleman and wandered around the image and saw the night sky, the trees, I'm like, ooh, what's, what are they having for dinner? What's on the table? What, what's their trash bin? What's that jug on the floor next to the trash bin? And I, I don't want to get focused down there. So darken all that stuff out. Um, and, but otherwise, really nice image. For boss. Um, I like the idea of this one with the the rock that you're standing in, the cave you're standing in, just in complete shadow. Uh, so it's jet black. And the, so we're just seeing this jagged line. But when I when you take that kind of photo, it really allows you to nail the exposure on the water and everything uh, out there because it's brighter. Uh, so you got to do that faster shutter speed to get that exposure spot on at the sacrifice of you lose all your shadow detail. So that's a, a good compromise in this particular type of image, but unfortunately this image, the surf, especially here towards the top, it's just really blown out. It's really bright white. I'm not being able to see uh, any of the detail in the surf. So if I'm gonna have 80% of, 70% of my picture jet black, the part of it that isn't jet black, I should have superior detail and really, really good exposure. And so. We just really don't have that here. I do like the light on the on the sand, the wet sand here in the bottom center, um, but I, I need to have just more detail in the surf there. Uh, otherwise, I'd want to see more shadow detail because you went for that longer exposure to try to um, show me both. Dancing trees. And um, this was interesting. Um, I, I like this kind of mirror mirrored effect uh, we have here, and it is such a perfect reflection. I was kind of struggling whether that was artificially created by flipping it or um, that was just, it was really, really still pond because we are seeing little ripples there in the foreground. But this looks really good as a black and white. I think that was a smart choice to, to make this a monochrome. 
Um, Cause then we can really just appreciate the graphic lines of these trees that amazingly are all facing in, in different directions, uh, creating all these interesting angles uh, throughout the image. So this is one that's just fun to look around at. Um, it's a really nice job. And it's, a, and it's a good black and white too, good blacks and whites and shades of gray in between. Monochrome intermediate, three images. Life is good. Um, I struggled with this one a little bit with the framing. Uh, we, we've included a lot of water below the boat and, and I'm guessing because a photographer want to see a bunch of that reflection, um, but it's at the sacrifice of the gentleman's right up against the top of the, practically up against the top of the image. And maybe there's something else distracting there you're trying to crop out. So just to me, it it felt backwards. And we talked about this in one of the other images tonight too, where it just, he's pushed up, the whole family is pushed up towards the top. And that was just kind of a little awkward to me. I wanted them to be kind of pushed down a little bit more into the scene. Doesn't necessarily have to be dead center, but just more room there. Uh, and then they're all looking off screen. So I don't know what they're looking at. Um, and so I, I, I didn't even notice the guy with the fishing rod at first because they're all just kind of blended together. So I think the contrast also needs to be um, increased a little bit here too. So that would just give a little bit more strength to the, the family here on the boat. Poppies, where the magic is in the texture. So I like the uh, composition of this one. We got so you know, all this different plant life. And I, I think the from a balance standpoint, your composition is good. The the problem with this one is the monochrome conversion. It's just all middle gray. If you especially compare it to the last photo we saw and then some of the ones you'll see later. We, we don't have any pure blacks in this image. I don't really even see pure whites. The brightest part of the image I see is this little out of focus plant here in the lower right. Um, and I don't want the brightest part of my image to be in the lower corner of my image. I want it to be more in the center, um, maybe on one of these poppies. So I think that fern or whatever is in the lower right corner just needs to be darkened down significantly. Um, and then just overall increase the contrast uh, on this. And that will help with the sharpness a little bit. This one's a little soft. Uh, so increasing the, sharp, the contrast will make it seem a little sharper uh, than it currently is. Next. The water always wins. And this is another one where I felt the composition was a little off and it's like there's a lot of interesting elements uh, in this image. We have this kind of water receding here in the foreground with the little stumps uh, there. Uh, and then of course we got all these uh, pilings there. And then we got stuff in the water, we got background. It's just my eye was just like, what, what do you want me to focus on? Because there's just a lot going on here. So I think this is a case where you need to isolate down a little bit. Um, so for me, I would crop out the right side of the image. I don't think I need to see all these poles that are out there uh, in the water, especially the two right up against the, the right edge there. Um, so I'd crop in down that, maybe crop down the sky some a little bit. So I'm just focused in on this kind of cluster of pilings here in the foreground and the receding water. Um, the This one seems a little bit middle gray too, not as bad as the last one. We've definitely seen some darker shadows. Uh, but I'd play with the lights and darks in your post-processing to um, just make this one pop a little bit more. So some some different choices, I think, is needed for this one. Monochrome advanced, eight images. Cacti in Huntington Park. So this one, um, it's it's interesting. It's kind of similar to the one we saw in the middle in the last the last grouping where I said it was all middle gray. This one has some really great uh, contrast in it. Unfortunately, the, the great contrast is that the cacti there in the back of the frame. Um, and then where the cacti here in the lower right, much like that bright spot in that other image, it's the brightest part of the image. And I don't have the contrast and stuff that's really lovely on this cactus in the background, but I wish I had the same amount of contrast and darkened shadows here in the foreground in this lower right corner. I think that would make that more balanced because I, I find myself go to the center of the frame because I love that contrast and those bright spots on top of the cactus. But then my eyes immediately pulled down here to the corner and it kind of stays there. <clears throat> that combined with the hillside 
my eyes like, whoa, where, what's, what side is up? You know, where's my angles are all different than my eyes expecting. Um, so I think there's some, some good processing here on parts of it, but just not uniform enough to kind of hold it all together. A parade of elephants. Um, I like the, you know, grouping here. This is, I think it was a really smart choice with your cropping to just have a little bit of, of the ground so we can see what they're walking on. And then that nice kind of uh, muted sky up at the top. Um, I think that really plays off well because the, the elephants themselves are so strong uh, with their shapes and with the shadows. Having just that plain large amount of sky, I think was a smart choice to, to balance it out. Um, good. And I think this is a pretty good black and white uh, conversion. I'd maybe play the contrast a little bit, make it a little bit stronger. Uh, I think you can go, you can lose maybe a little bit more shadow in those elephants and make it a little bit more um, high contrast. Uh, but otherwise, this one's really nice and, and good sharpness throughout all the elephants, even the little baby. Feathers flying. So this one's really creative. Uh, kind of really kept me guessing as to what the heck was going on here. And uh, I mean, I'm guessing it was created on the computer somehow, but um, really interesting. Um, I like this display of black and white uh, and some shades of gray and these interesting shapes that you've created here. Um, I'm not quite sure why we have the, the stuff at the very top uh, kind of cropped off. I wish Everything else is included in the frame with nice spacing on the left, spacing on the bottom, spacing on the right. So why not make it uniform and have spacing on the top so this whole feathery thing is, is contained within the white box. Um, so if you have a little wider field of view of this, I, I'd try to find one that's not cropped off at the top. But otherwise, very interesting, whatever this is. I spent a lot long time looking at this one the other night, just trying to figure out what the heck it was or how it was created. Um, it's just yeah, very interesting to look at. Abbott's Lagoon, Point Reyes, California. So this is kind of like that photo we saw a while ago, uh, except the monochrome version, um, where this one, really nice monochrome conversion, got some nice blacks and whites um, here, some strong contrast. Um, but what am I looking at? Uh, this, this shoreline here is kind of interesting with the different kind of grasses and the blacks and whites and grays, and that's kind of interesting. Uh, but then I go up to this rock mass in the middle that's, I guess, supposed to be my subject, but there's not a lot to it, right? There's not some interesting vegetation or an animal or or something. It's just this kind of little bit of a hump, and then it just flattens out off to the right there. Um, so it's just not enough interest um, to keep my attention. And, and maybe if you crop down and took out the sky and so you more focus on the foreground, that might make a more compelling image. But I think as it is where we've kind of divided the image with half mountain and, and clouds and half shoreline, I like the bottom half much better than I do the top half. Opposing forces. This is a really good scene uh, to catch this wave crashing up against these rocks. I really like your composition choice where we have this um, flowiness of the water here at the bottom. There's just enough of it to kind of anchor the image. Uh, and then kind of lead you right into that wave smacking against the rocks. Um, and then good job blurring out the background. So we can see what's back there. We can see it's more rocks, um, but it doesn't compete with the main rock formation here in the foreground. Um, and a good job with the monochrome conversion. We've got some nice dark blacks there. Um, and then we're still seeing, still have detail in the, in the surf uh, of the wave. So really nice job with your shutter speed and composition and, and conversion. So this was nice. The cemetery of Longyearbyen Svalbard below an abandoned coal mine, twenty twenty two. So this one, this photo made me really jealous because I was just here uh, six months ago uh, in June. I took a trip up the Longyearbyen and up to the Arctic there, and we drove by and we saw this, and I couldn't get my camera out fast enough to snap a picture, and we didn't have a chance to stop. Uh, so I saw this scene. Um, so it's interesting with this old coal mine and they have all these uh, kind of maintained cable cable car things up there. So I like this idea of the bright white crosses kind of in this barren landscape and then trying to show a connection to um, 
where it's from. Uh, it's unfortunate that they're just so far apart uh, that had I not been there and had I not read the description, I wouldn't quite understand what the heck was going on up there on the hillside because it's just so small and far away. Um, it's and, and that's how it is in real life. Um, so I think I can't really make that connection between, oh, you know, being a coal miner is a hard life. And that's why we have the cemetery here for all the coal miners. Um, so I can't really appreciate without the title. And then, you know, that coal mining uh, trail, trail, tramway up there, it just gets lost in the hillside. Um, I think you need to bring out the contrast in a little bit more uh, just so that that pops out of the page a little bit more. And then that would kind of marry it to to the crosses there at the bottom versus it kind of just dissolves into the background and I can't really appreciate um, that connection. Belay Vista. So this one, I, I, what I'm try, I was trying to figure out, at first I thought, oh, this is an infrared shot, um, but then the trees in the background weren't the same. So I was having a hard time with the shades of gray in these grasses in the foreground. They're kind of this weird kind of glowy, glowy white. Um, so like I said, I thought it was infrared, but then I didn't see that in the background. Um, so it's just, most of your image is this grass here in the foreground. And it's just lacking detail. It's all just kind of a wash of middle gray. I, I can't really see sharpness here. And so I don't know if you just had a shallow depth of field, but focused on the distance. That's what my suspicion, like it was a F5.6 or something like that. And you focused in the distance, which means everything in the foreground is going to be totally out of focus. So you take a shot like this, you need to focus in the foreground, or sometimes people do a hyperfocal where you focus about a third of the way into the frame, third of the way into the distance, uh, focus there, that will get you sharpness ahead of it, and then the sharpness behind it, and then use a smaller f-stop, like an, at least an f-11 for a scene like this, if not a 16 or f-22. Um, so this one, I think, neat composition, um, but not having sharpness in all that huge amount of foreground that takes up 70% of the image um, is, I think, the downfall for this one. Cracks and silos. So this one's really, really good. So if you've been kind of hearing what I, the different comments I've been making on the other black and white images, I think this one has it all, right? It has, we have really dark blacks and really bright whites. Um, we have this wonderful leading line of the tracks, love the highlight on the top of the rails. Um, and then this ominous sky kind of ties it all together. Um, especially with the, I like how we have some light on the grasslands uh, there. If that had been all dark, like everything else, I think it would have been too dark. Uh, so just lots of plays of lights and dark, really good composition and just really um, good processing on this one. And that silo and everything just really pops out of the page, which is nice because we got that rail leading us right to that. So you want that kind of payoff. Um, so just really good processing uh, on this one all around. Monochrome Masters, seven images. I'm keeping an eye on you. So this one, I like the the texture and the effect that the crocodile, or sorry, alligator uh, has gotten with the effect you applied. Um, but then he kind of gets lost in this really dark uh, mass around him. I, and I know he's brighter and maybe you tried to brighten him up so he pops out a little bit more. Um, but I think you need to lighten that background just a little bit. To me, the, the ratio between the two is, is not, something's off balance for me. So it just, it's, see, it's too crunchy, too over-processed. Um, so maybe just kind of soften this effect on the water and maybe brighten it up just a hinge or go even darker. So he's just really dark. Um, I think it would just balance it out a little bit better. Late afternoon on the little farm. So it's a nice uh, infrared shot. So here we'd see with all the trees all white. I uh, like the composition here with this tree up on the on the left side, and then just these lines of grass here coming diagonally across. Um, I think those are the shadows in those are nice, and that plays off well to these really bright uh, trees there with the infrared um, technique. Uh, so this one's a really, really clever. So kind of a simple scene, but the infrared just takes it up a notch. Um, so that was a smart choice. Hello. 
this one's really good. I've seen tons of photos of sand dunes. Um, and usually people go very heavy with the dark, the dark shadows, which can make some really compelling images. And so I like that this one's a little different that the shadows weren't that jet black that I see uh, so much. Um, so we can, we can, it's just darkness. And the title is really kind of apt for this one with this flow, because you do, I do find my eyes kind of just flowing through the image. Um, it's just nice and soft and um, it's just very pleasing to look at and just kind of follow these ripples all around. There is something in the sand dunes here in the, right on the left side of the frame in the shadow there, probably this little piece of grass or something like that. I would just clone that out because that's kind of breaking up your nice softness that we're seeing in the rest of the um, picture. And we're not really seeing any grass or anything in the rest of the picture either. So just clone out that one little spot. Uh, but other than that, this one's really nice. Disappearing beach. So this one kind of reminded me a bit of the one we saw a little while ago with all the pilings where I felt like there's a lot of different nice elements uh, in the picture, but they weren't necessarily all harmonizing together. Um, I like this middle part of the frame where we got these kind of dark black rocks and this and the beach there and the water kind of breaking through. But then we have a lot of white around it. And so I kind of felt like the crop was off. I don't know if we need to go pano crop even tighter down or maybe just show me more right part of the image or left part of the image. So I kind of find my eyes trying to reframe this one because um, it's just this black kind of swath in the middle and all in shadow. We're not, we can't see any of the shadow detail, which not necessarily needed, although I would have probably liked to see it on some of the rocks, especially there in the background, um, just so I can make them a little bit more defined. So it's almost like it's a, a high key image, um, but the shapes aren't interesting enough maybe to pull that off. Sun and moon passing in the sky. So this one's kind of interesting, you know, as, as a you know, different type of a, a eclipse shot. And then we see the clouds in front of it, creating this kind of malted look uh, on the crescent moon there. So that was kind of neat. Um, but I, we see also some clouds kind of around the moon. And I don't necessarily know we needed them in this one. I would have rather just had it against this jet black sky. So maybe kind of tone those tone those down a bit. Um, so the only kind of malting we see is just on the moon itself. Pilgrim, Lalibela, Ethiopia. So it's a really great portrait, um, really nice sharp on his face. We've got some nice light on his face and a little catch eye, catch light in his eye. Um, good job with your black and white. You know, he really pops out of the page and then the background kind of just recedes away. I'm not sure you need to include uh, as much of the staff in the right side of the image as you did. Um, I kind of, his face is nice. It definitely catches my attention, but then I see that rod and my eye just wants to kind of drift off a little bit over there and it's out of focus. And it's not sharp, which you don't want it to be because you want to focus on his face. Um, so I think you could crop out part of that, maybe crop out to where that one, um, ripple in his in his shawl is on his sleeve and then maybe just take off the, the two ten percent of the right side of the image you'd still see a little bit of the, the staff but then it would end up kind of in the corner of the image and then form more of a framing uh versus kind of an element uh to the image and i think that would help keep my attention tight in on on his face um but otherwise really really nice uh, shot here Reflection on a foggy day. Uh, so this is clever uh, catching this reflection, this little pool here. Uh, this is one where I think I needed a different processing. Uh, we got this, we talked about muddled images are just kind of this middle gray. This is kind of muddled dark gray, which is everything's very dark. Um, yes, there's some highlights of white uh, in the rocks and stuff there, but I think you need to put a few more little bits of light, splashes of light, so it's just not so kind of this dark mass framing it out. And I know you're trying to just keep emphasis on the tree, um, but the rocks are taking up a large part of your image. So make them be part of the image. Allow me to appreciate some of the detail uh, and texture in those rocks. So I think bringing out the shadow detail a little bit uh, might just help balance out the image uh, a little bit. Okay, now we move through critique feedback. Yeah. 
bowed under heavy snow. Yeah, I like this one with the play of the, the bright leaves against the snow. Um, and I think your framing framing is nice here with the diagonal of the, the branch coming in. Um, and so it makes for a nice scene. I, I kind of feel like it is a little tight for me. Um, maybe I'd like to be just a little bit wider. Uh, we're starting to see in the upper left corner a little bit more of the bright leaves. I'd like to maybe see just a little bit more of that tree because I'd frame it out um, a little bit more equally. So if you have a little bit wider field of view, um, give it another 10% or so on the left um, and we'll give this main tree a little bit more breathing room uh, too because it is kind of this big tree with this arch and it kind of ends right up against the left side of the frame. So uh, I think that might be a little stronger composition, but otherwise uh, this one's nice. Nice to look at. Tree and monolith. Um, this one was interesting, this kind of pairing these two together. Um, I think for this one, I would like to see a little bit more contrast in the tree trunk based on how the lighting is. Looks like it's coming from the back right. Um, I would expect this tree trunk here on the right to be in, in a lot stronger shadow. And so my eye is a little confused why it's so bright. And I'm guessing that's just how it was edited uh, to bring that out. Um, but I think that one needs to be a little bit stronger um, contrast and because that would play off to kind of the strong texture and the statement of the monolith here on the left. Um, so to me, it just seems like you try to brighten up too much um, and, and shadows can be okay, especially in this type of photo. Deep within the earth. This one's really neat with this um, almost like monochrome of the rocks on the, on the sides, but with the bluish tint to them. Uh, and then just this pop of orange uh, here at the top. So really neat. Um, I haven't seen someone process one of these uh, canyon photos like this. So that was kind of unexpected to see these kind of blue, these blue colors um, on, on the side. I would say just try to make that maybe a little bit more even. And I think it's just how the highlights are done, but you can maybe just bring up the highlights a little bit and a few of these other rocks just so it's we can follow some of those curves a little bit more completely versus they're kind of just cut off in a couple places. Uh, the, the basically the highlight kind of ends. So I just go in and brighten up a few bit more of this just so it's more even flow so I can kind of follow the flow. Uh, but otherwise, very, very interesting. A really good composition on this one. I like the, the crop and the arrangement of the elements. The scene captured at Salvation Mountain near the Salton Sea in Southern California, an eclectic off the beaten path Americana tourist destination. I like the various tires up against the biblical rundown vehicle. Yeah, so this is one where I would have taken a step or two to the right. Um, I think to show different angle, uh, to not show that bike at such an obscure angle, to maybe be able to read a little bit easier some of the stuff on the side of this mobile home. It's like you pick this vantage point because that big tire on the left was important to you. And obviously you mentioned it there in the description, but I don't think that's the most interesting part of the picture. I think the tricycle and the bike on the right and all the wording and the, even the tree here painted or scratched into this mobile home are more interesting. So I think if you took a couple steps to the right and changed your angle a little bit, you could still include that large tire and still see the biblical stuff on the back of the motor home. But then we can appreciate a little bit more of the so the other side. And I think that perspective would be a little bit stronger composition. Patio seating. This was an interesting idea with these highlights on the chair and then kind of play off that same colors in the rocks. Um, this one, I think just the composition was a little off for me. I think in this one, I'd rather have a wider field of view. So we have a little bit more of the paver stones um, to kind of really set kind of a wide swath to this you know, very ornate uh, chair here with all the texture and rust on it. Just feels a little too tight in on for me. Uh, and then whatever processing or effect was done to the brick, just a little bit too over the top as far as like unnatural looking uh, for me. So I think a couple things I would do differently for this one. An intimate glimpse into Painted Hills, Oregon. 
Yeah, so this one's very nice. It, it looks kind of like a fabric or something like that. We've got a lot of interesting colors and little highlights. I'm not quite sure what the deal is with these little bits of tree tree here. I'd almost want to just clone out those two little gray tree things and have this be this this abstract where people don't can't figure out is this fabric, is this a slightly out of focus landscape? You know, kind of keep them guessing because I think the lighting is nice, the composition is nice. There's just not enough of those little gray tree things um, to make them kind of a, a connection with everything else that's going on. So if I can't find a connection, to me, it's a distraction. Um, but otherwise, everything's really clever on this one. But try try that, cloning those two items out. Look down, create art. It's all art. Yeah, uh, interesting uh, scene. I, I think they kind of capture all these geometric shapes. Uh, really interesting colors on this one. I don't think the on the bottom we have this, I guess, where the we transition from one bit of cement to a different bit. I don't think we needed all of that. I really like the, the darker, more chestnut colors on the top um, part of it. And so I'd almost crop out where kind of that shadow starts. Um, cause I don't think I, cause that's a brighter or maybe just darken it down. Cause it's just a brighter bit of cement. My eye wants to kind of sink there. Um, and I'd rather stay up here in the middle frame with the green circle. Um, so maybe try just toning that down or, or, or crop out, but maybe tone down might be better. For a brief moment each morning, if conditions are right, a rainbow appears at the base of lower falls, Yellowstone river. Yellowstone National Park. Yeah, so this one, um, yeah, I'm kind of glad I had the description of this one because it didn't quite catch the rainbow at first. It's just not prominent enough. Uh, the colors just aren't popping out uh, enough out of the frame. So this one kind of, to me, looked like a, like a little bit of a snapshot and not maybe as well thought out. I think maybe a little lower vantage point, uh, maybe showing a little bit less of the trees on the top. Uh, so I can really feel like I'm down in that canyon um, and I can emphasize that that rainbow there that's, that's really faint. Okay. We have covered all the images. We'll take another five minutes. Yep. So, uh, Victoria, we have one award in basic. My cursor in the right place here. First place, there. I don't know if James is here tonight. He, he, he was. Uh, I saw Any comments, James? Very you... nice. Hi. No, I am here. Oh, great. So, yeah. So I'm lucky enough. I've lived in my house for just over 40 years, and this is my view from my deck. Oh, oh, wow. Must Not be bad. nice. Not bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm blessed. The spot. Great shot. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Bill, press the M key. Oh, yeah. I keep forgetting to do that. Thank you, Steve. Mountain. Does that help? No, no metadata with this one. Oh, okay. That's what it is. Oh. I must not be submitting it with that. I should. <laughs> A pictorial intermediate, one award. Elizabeth, first nice. place. Nice. Cool. Oh, very nice. Or just colors. Yeah, the lights are cool. Mm-hmm. Is Elizabeth? The boat movement is fun. Is she here tonight? Didn't see her. Okay. Victorial advanced four awards. Honorable mention, Phil. Hmm. Oh, nice. Bees and Blooms field Eric. trip, I bet. Congratulations, Phil. Third place, Greg. Very nice. I like this. That one. I like the teeny surfer. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Greg. 
Second place, Ellen. I <laughs> knew that was yours, Ellen. <laughs> <Beautiful>. <laughs> Thank you. Very nice. Yeah, just beautiful. Yeah, she was she was not posing for me. This is a during a performance. Was the black background natural created or you know it there were some trees behind her and it was kind of mottled and very dark, but I I just made it black because I thought it was distracting. Yep. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. Good idea. Gorgeous shot. Mm -hmm. Triangle shape. In first place, Thank Stephanie. You. Oh, it's uh, uh, an awesome beast. Thanks. This is uh, wonderful. Thank you. Another one of my South American birds that I love, the Seti Emma. So, what, how'd you do the background? That is actually the color of the dirt road behind him. Oh, wow. Really? How cool! Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I did kind of adjust it a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's red dirt. Love the color. Cool. Uh, yeah, thank you. Congratulations. Tutorial Masters, we have one award. Yeah. Herb. Knew it was. Knew it was. Oh, yeah, knew it. Yeah, that's a, that's a herb pick. Very much. This was actually the reason for my last uh, trip to Utah. I had seen images of this place and, and wanted to be out there myself. So Lori and I uh, went out with the truck and you kept to go on the long dirt road to get there. And we slept there yeah. overnight and had the whole place to ourselves except for one of the truck. And in the morning, I'm setting up my tripod and all of a sudden the photo tours show up. <laughs> oh, no. I, oh. With six people in each. <laughs> Coming down to try to do the same thing. So uh, maybe that's not unique, but it was it was fun for me to take. Thank you. So where is or what uh, park is this? It is or what out, area? It's it's outside of Hanksville, uh, Utah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've been there. You could it's factory butte. Uh, well, it's in the factory butte area. You can just take this image, uh, put it into Google Photos ID or whatever, and it'll it'll give you the uh, ge the latitude and longitude. So wow. huh. not that hard. Yeah, to it's so smooth. Moon, Moonscape Overlook, if you want to look at, uh, I guess, on Google Maps. Wow. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, so, it's other yeah. world. So Thank you. Colors. So where's where's Lori in her red coat? Yeah. yeah. I could not get her to <laughs> go off this cliff. No, I have to go off this. <laughs> I knew it. Like down there. I, I have, have limits. I momentarily considered putting a little Lori in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Nature advanced four awards. Honorable mention, Stephanie. Very nice. Love the pattern on the back around the tail. Oh. Yeah. yeah, that is. It's like a fingerprint for them. You you can identify. They're all, everyone is different. Yeah, amazing, amazing animals. It's, it, it's a wonderful nature story. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Congratulations. Third place, Linda. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, I definitely, I like the comments on what to change about this, which is really nice. How to darken some things up that I didn't even notice before. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your input. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Linda. Thank you. Second place, oh, yeah, Sand Eater, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, you get around. Cool animals. Very. They are, uh, they go way back. I mean, I think they go back to the mil millions of years. <laughs> wow. Beautiful. And that's the anthill right there, right? Yes, it is. And uh, 
I think the last image had uh, the blurred, this blurred uh, in the background is another, well, it's a road, but there's another anthill behind him. Hmm. Wow, nice. Big claws. Yeah. 16,000 mm -hmm. ISO. Early morning. Really wonderful. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Gorgeous. Thank you. Uh, that is so cool. Thank you. Um, I took that in the Okabonga Delta, I guess it's about a year and a half ago now. Um, it <laughs> basically stayed in that tree for <clears throat> probably 36 hours. Um, the behind oh, that you can't see is a hyena stole its, um, its kill. So it's kind of waiting up there patiently for the hyena to leave it alone, but it never did. Huh. Congratulations. <laughs> it looks <Yeah>. mad. Yeah. <laughs> Nature Masters, two awards. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jennifer. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, wow. Yeah, um, those spots um, are actually sunspots. Because uh -huh. I looked at a bunch of images and they all had those <laughs> spots in the same places. Yeah. <laughs> also, <laughs> our rules forbid taking anything out of uh, nature photos. So, oh, okay. Glad you got to go here, Jennifer. Yeah, yeah. oh boy. <laughs> That's fun. It was really fun. It was a great trip. <laughs> In first place. Yeah, that's great. Oh, no. yeah. What a face. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. This was uh, earlier this year, another uh, bucket list uh, destination for us. And uh, we were there with Tui De Roy, who's the premier uh, Galapagos photographer. But in essence, you get, they get you there early in the morning and you just crawl down on your knees and, and look for these guys to do something interesting. So, no. oh my How gosh, big is this animal? Thank you. Herb, is it, is it a, an herbivore? Um, yes. Lori says yes. Because <laughs> it doesn't look like it has any teeth. <laughs> yeah, he gums his food. He gums his food, yes. No gummy. Yeah. Sort of like me. <laughs> okay. Early in the morning, he hasn't put his dentures in yet. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Congratulations. Is it a All right, giant so thing? There, there are a couple. There are a couple feet long with the tail. Okay. Thank you. Wow. Intermediate one award. Amy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, these are just, these gardens are just like so amazing. And there are deer literally everywhere in this town. I mean, oh it used to be a deer park, but they've, they've taken over and you just sometimes get them in a really cool little location. So I was glad to have spotted this one hidden among these, uh, these, uh, uh, lanterns. I think they are. Thank you. I, I like discovering cool. the deer, you know? You yeah. Know? Oh, wow. And you go, oh, look. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, and they give you that deer in the headlights look back. So <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to get them face on. Congratulations. <laughs> Masters, four awards. Uh, Mara. I love that. Yeah, it's beautiful. Great eyes. Yeah. Eye and a half. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Tamara. Uh, wow. Third place, Jennifer. Uh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, this was uh, an interesting experience uh, phot photographing this moonrise. And uh, especially as night was falling. Um, thank you. Where were you standing? 
um, up on the Marin headlands, headlands. Yeah. you know, okay. overlooking the bridge and the city. And uh, on the side of a road, there were a bunch of us all lined up with tripods, um, <laughs> running back and forth to get different perspectives. And, um, cool. Nice. If you look really closely at the top to the left of the moon, there's an airplane about to fly past it. <laughs> Oh, oh my oh, god. Yeah. <laughs> that little black speck. Little black dot, yes. It's just lighting on the bridge. And the, the bridge just lit up. Yeah, the bridge is lit nicely. And the sales tower yeah. makes a nice feature. Yeah. Yeah, Coit Tower looks great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a great time of day to have the the moon rising and the you know the all the lights starting to come on. It, it was it was yeah. fun. Yeah, nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Second place, Jack. Oh, Cambodia. Yeah, that's beautiful. With his oh. iPhone. Oh my goodness. It's his iPhone, right. <laughs> I'm sorry, his flat camera. iPhone 13. His flat camera. <laughs> nice. Congratulations, Jack. Ah, first place tomorrow. <laughs> really sweet. I love those little faces. They are so just gorgeous. Little fluffy heads. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great shot. Congratulations, tomorrow. It's wonderful. Monochrome, basic two awards. Second place, Dan Tabonic. Mm, very nice. Dan's not here. Congratulations, Dan. First place, James. I'm doing well tonight. You are. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful so this, photo. Yeah, yeah. No, I love I love yeah. yeah. And the the Milky Way. I mean, what a place. Uh we were up at a uh actually a <laughs> An arborist field trip to see the bristlecone pines, and so this is oh, a campground okay. we stayed at. So this was like pretty high elevation, you know, close to nine thousand feet. Wow! I thought it was New Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> it seems so intimate, like you're just spying on their private little event. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Camera. Yeah, really great. Uh, it felt felt to me just kind of the quintessential campfire you know scene and uh, so what is the little white thing you know like a devil's face or something that's uh, above the the oh, yeah, well, i think jar they had left. hung hung something up on the tree uh-huh until it was oh. pointed out i hardly oh yeah down lower like just to the left of the bottle right we're talking about yes mm -hmm. yeah, yeah up, to the left up to the a little bottom. bit right there yeah. right there yeah right there yeah yeah i'm really not sure what pretty that cool. Was. <laughs> yeah pretty cool it's the haunting it was an appar it's apparition or something <laughs> yeah congratulations thank you appreciate it <clears throat> intermediate one award mark hollinger Mark here tonight? He was. Congratulations. Dog is really interested. Yeah. What's going on? The dog is interested. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, Mark. Monochrome Advanced, four awards. Honorable mention, Linda. Yeah. Thank you. That was a fun place to photograph. I can remember where it was. <laughs> I don't remember <laughs> what it was. We were all there. Is it the Goat Rock trip? Goat Rock? Oh, probably. Looks like it. <laughs> that was yeah, Bill knows all the waves there. <laughs> My name. <clears throat> Thank you. Nice. Congratulations. Great shot. Thanks. Replace Trisha. Yay. Oh, Trisha. Oh. Cool. Thank you. 
um, this was taken in a parking garage in Petaluma. <laughs> Somebody had painted a very straight kind of bunch of, not even overlapping, just these little curves. And so I, I did an, a motion blur uh, of it. And this cool. is what I got. Nice wow. job. Great. Huh. That is beautiful. so in camera, not in computer. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> cool. What What were the colors? The original colors. Black. Oh, it's, it's all black. Black on a gray uh, wall. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, cool. Congratulations. Thank you. Good seeing. I can play Cindy. Oh, thank you. Well, oh, I just saw the second egret. Yeah. If that's what they are, cattle egrets? Yeah. Probably. Cattle egrets. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Very sweet. I actually think there's a third one right behind the first one. Grayish. But who knows? <laughs> I can't see it. A shadow? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the other side. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's a great shot. He, he looks so powerful. Very sharp. Mm -hmm. Nice sky. Congratulations, Cindy. Thank you. First place. Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's cool. Um, that's is Sherry here tonight? Special. No. I haven't seen her. No, oh. she's. That, that's thrilled. just stunning. Yeah, that is just great. awesome. That's a great monochrome. Yeah. What if yeah. she's, she is Nick? Yeah, I bet. Okay, congratulations, Sherry. Monochrome Masters, five images, five awards. Honorable mention, Jennifer. Oh, thank you. I'll definitely try lightening that water. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm, I'll, I will definitely mess with this photo some more. But thank you very much. Congratulations. Pretty creative. I like it. Mm -hmm. I yeah, like I do too. And throat and creative too. It's but you got to change the title, Jennifer. You want me to change it? Yeah, from I've to I'm. Yeah, as a typo. From I to what? From I V E I apostrophe V E to I apostrophe M. Oh, I. Oh, you know, I read that <laughs> twenty times, trying to figure what was wrong with it, <laughs> and I missed it every time. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, that yeah. Tim. Tim. Tim's nice. He's been taken. A lot of images lately. Yes, yes yeah. That's, that's with his flat camera. Yeah, <laughs> flat camera. Flat camera. Hey, congratulations, Tim. Uh, Third place, uh, Mara. Mara, yeah. She takes such nice pictures of people. Yeah, she really does a great job Africa. with people. Anything Africa. <laughs> Congratulations tomorrow. Must be Jack. Jack. That was Jack's. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but where's the farm? <laughs> That's a tiny little farm. <laughs> Good point. Congratulations, Jack. First place, her. Hey. Oh. Wow, doing well tonight. Just raking yep. them in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, this is uh, my favorite dune in Death Valley, Eureka Dunes, up maybe 900 feet or whatever it is, uh, just during sunset. And there's no uh, little lorry there because I was there by myself. So <laughs> I had to make do. <laughs> Anticipating the question. But it was a uh, nice lighting. Uh, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank Gorgeous. You. Gorgeous shot. Gorgeous.
Uh, Best of show. For uh, yes. Drum roll. Uh, <sighs> tomorrow. All right. No. Mm. Incredible. Yeah. All right. Boy. Nice going. <laughs> Good work, everyone. That was fun, fun. Hey, congrats, everyone. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Looking yeah, thanks, at us. Yeah. Where are you located, Greg? I'm just outside of Denver in Colorado. Longmont. Yeah. Okay. Longmont. Yeah. yeah. Used to live out there. <laughs> well, thanks for staying up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's an hour. Yeah, yeah an I'm hour definitely late. past my bedtime at this point. So. <laughs> But at least I didn't have to race home from work like when I judged for camera clubs on the East Coast and there were two hours ahead oh of me. Um, yeah. So yeah. I could have dinner first at least. Yeah. All right. Thank well, good night, everybody. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. Congratulations. Thank you, Thanks, Amy. Thank you all. Good night. Good night. Good night.